I, I'm could I ask you about your work? <laughs> could I interview you? I know that Is probably... Is that a good idea? I suppose... <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Is it impertinent of my part? You want well, to... let me tell you, it's frightening to meet a legend, and, and I know that uh, it must be upsetting for you, too. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I know that half your life has been spent wanting to know about me, so shoot. Well, it seems like that's true, because I've been watching you an awful long time, well, and, been... uh, uh, and with great pleasure, that's very nice. as millions of other people have been doing. I think that deserves a little applause. Oh, no, no. I'm just trying to work them up. <laughs> but really, 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 uh, I would like to know more about you. And I bet there are millions of people who, who uh, don't know much about you except as you appear in the course of your conversation. In other words, the other night on the show, or not the other night, some weeks ago, I heard you say to my distress that you had once been an actor. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Now, I'm always sorry to hear anybody that I admire has been an actor. <laughs> there are those who were more immediately distressed than you were hearing it <laughs> that night. Yes, I was one of the, uh, I guess, uh, in the annals of the theater, I guess probably one of the, one of the top three second murderers in Richard III. Um, that but was that your only it. role? Uh, yes, and unfortunately, it wasn't even in the play, Richard III. I, 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 I was in a repertory thing. This actually happened to me one night. I committed the awful sin of being in repertory and coming out and doing a line from the wrong play. Not just one line, but uh, it, it, it certainly... If you've done that, you're, you're, you're a veteran, because we've all done that. Have you done that? Oh, my goodness. Have you? Oh, my goodness, yes. We, oh, we, we even did a gag of it. By the way, you, you, you said something wrong when you introduced me. You said, and this is a parenthesis, that I'd produced three plays in my repertory company and then went to, to Hollywood, and in fact, we did dozens and dozens of shows. I, at, I one of, at one time, we had a, a repertory yeah. in which we were, uh, our proposition, our idea was to do uh, uh, a, a tragedy, which was Danton's death, and another night, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a farce by uh, La Biche. And we had a famous actor from Middle Europe playing uh, in the tragedy, and he didn't have any part in the farce. But every night of the farce, he used to come in during the big door slamming thing, dressed up as Robespierre, look around and say, oh, mistake, and run out again. <laughs> in the wrong play, But <laughs> showed the right idea. spirit. But of yeah. course, <laughs> but, but we've all, we, you know, in Shakespeare, you go into the wrong lines all the time because of the rhythm. Sure. If you stop thinking for a miniature in another play. I, I saw another actor do it one time. This was at Stratford, Connecticut, but he came on and he uh, started The Merchant of Venice right in the middle of the council scene in Othello. And, and it's pretty hard when the Council of Cyprus breaks up laughing and giggling uh, in the serious scene. It's very, very Now, you began as an actor? Excuse me if I press on with this. That's all right. You won't learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> when did you go straight? I... <laughs> I... <laughs> While you were asking that question, I think. Uh, that, that, that startled me. No, I, I'm kind of a male garbo, Mr. Wells. I, I like to preserve a great deal of mystery about myself. And, and my so origins. ends the interview? And, and that's it. <laughs> yep. Oh, my name's up on the screen. We, we have a message. We'll be right, we'll be right back. Gee, there's so many things Excuse I, me, I don't think we should let you weasel out of this quite so easily. <laughs> But I'm thinking of them. I, oh, please. You know, you sit there, you sit there night after night for 90 minutes at a time, drunk with power, yes, pelting people with questions and a few simple little requests for information. And mm -hmm. what do we get? You know, the second murderer. That's right. right. Now, what did you do after, after leaving the boards? To leaving the boards, well, and I was a comedy writer for a while. I wrote for I Jack Parr and others. Now, that, uh, that brings me to a question. <laughs> you mentioned Jack Parr, and then you say, and others. Yes, I do. Who are the others? <laughs> I'm learning how to do this. This is very good. Uh, does uh, Jerry Lewis ring a bell? Uh, a rather dim gong. Uh, uh, 
I'm getting to sound like Noel. Yeah, yes, you are. Sort no. of fat Noel. Noel Coward. Not as funny, but the same delivery. Uh, no, well. <laughs> no, no, really. I, I'd, like a, I'd like to press on with an embarrassing question. Really? You know, among tenors, for example. Yes. Among newscasters, among Shakespearean actors, even among politicians, there's very little reluctance to discuss the competition. But why among you fellows who sit saying, will you welcome please a sweet singer of songs and, and uh, when did you stop meeting your yeah. wife and all the rest of it, yeah. why, do you, why do you fellows shrivel up? Your heads get like little walnuts. When, any, <laughs> when anybody ever mentions, for example, Johnny Carson or Merv Griffin or, yeah. or David Frost. What, what is this reluctance to mention uh, even the names? All right, that's a good question. What would we do? Uh, you know, you're all like that. It isn't just you. There and, must and, be and, a and, professional reason. And not express even an opinion on them. It, yeah, it's sort of common. a terrible I think it's because up. I think it's because you s are in competition with them in a sense, although those guys are both friends of mine that you mentioned. I have worked for them and all. And uh, you feel kind of funny talking about somebody who's doing sort of the same thing you do. And uh, I think that's why none of us ever mention the other jerks, the other fellows. <laughs> who, who do, oh, you've, you've trapped me, Mr. Wells. I oh, know, it's interesting. I though. don't feel that I have somehow. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, You're a you, sly one. You've Kevin. stripped me yeah. bare. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I see you, I'm getting nowhere with that line of, of, of Well, questioning. you know what? I, it makes me uncomfortable because I feel that I'm here every night. And, and so are they. And you're not. You see? And, oh, and I see. I, so I feel, you don't want me to go on with this. Well, you can. And will can. you remain this mystery forever? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm a thinly wrapped enigma. Uh, <laughs> that I, that there isn't really, there may not be that much there to know. But I, you know, I, while you're here, I feel obligated to all those people, particularly the film buffs, who, who expect me to ask you certain questions, but then you're probably tired of a lot of those. I, I mean, never answer them. Yeah. I never answer them, not because, I, uh, because of... Uh, of uh, uh, general snottiness. It's just that I, I, I don't know the answers to most of the questions. You mentioned Jerry Lewis, yeah. and I caught him on, on uh, one of your friend's shows. I guess we call him your friend, don't we? Yes. Don't, we don't mention that. <laughs> uh, I, I caught them on one of your friend's shows. In fact, he was on interminably <laughs> on one of your friend's shows. Yeah. And uh, I feel that what he did for Myra Breckenridge, I ought to do for Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Because uh, right. he really has a way of coming on as a great thinker, which should be stopped. <laughs> and, uh, why I mention him, though, and I'm not going to mention him much longer, because I would hate to do for him what he did for Myra Breckenridge. <laughs> Why I mention is because he said the sort of thing that you hear from film buffs and you don't expect to hear from Jerry Lewis. He actually said on The Tonight Show, yeah. well, the secret of authenticity and complete autocracy and autonomy is uh, autonomy and cinematic integrity. <laughs> or words to that effect. <laughs> now, those are the kind of questions uh, that the film buffs like to ask, and that I guess Jerry Lewis answers because he teaches, he teaches how to make movies in a school, among other things, I believe. That was, that was a thought he dropped several times. And uh, uh, my bitterness about him stems from the fact that here's a rich fellow who has plenty of other things to do except come on with that kind of dialogue. There's really too much of it. Do you, there's too many lots. long words. You know there are too many long words in, in the world nowadays? And that yeah. the younger the people are, the longer the words are. Have you noticed that? It's a very funny thing. They have a wonderful new hip language, which is really our old Harlem language, that I used to know when I was uh, running a theater up there, with a few new phrases. And they're great and very colorful. Mm -hmm. But everything else is terribly long. Nobody says, I see a thing a certain way. They say, I envisage it. Yes. Nobody says, uh, under t 30, uh, I would like to think up an idea. They say, I have conceived something, or this is my conception, or not, uh, or I, this is my relationship. Everything is four or five syllables long. Have you right. there, that? There's a veracity in what you're saying. <laughs> Do you have any recurrent dreams? I think we'll take a break. Oh, here. <laughs> you can play at this game. We'll be back after this. Break.